Good afternoon. Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about the emerging layer housing systems in the United States. And my contact info is shown here. The uh, email address is hxin at iState.edu. If you happen to have additional questions, wish to contact me. Okay, so just a little bit of uh, factoid about uh, U.S. egg industry. Uh, uh, currently, U.S. has a population of uh, about 350 million, and we have a national inventory about uh, uh, just a little under 300 million laying hens. So, on average, pretty much uh, one bird per person. And those birds produce about 83 billion eggs a year. And our capital consumption of eggs is uh, right now at uh, 258, actually projected to be uh, 261 eggs uh, this year. And those consumed eggs uh, in the form of 70% uh, of it uh, in the form of shell eggs and 30% in the processed eggs, uh, pasta, uh, cake, and so forth. And these eggs, 95%, uh, the bulk of the eggs, obviously produced in the conventional cage housing systems, either high-rise or uh, manure belt system. Obviously, uh, uh, modern hand housing, uh, there are quite a bit of changes over the past the few decades. And you can start from very primitive uh, backyard, a small flock operation, birds kept on the floor, and to you know, moving the bird into cages, but it's still uh, open-sided uh, and not very well uh, well controlled environment. And then to then somewhat uh, confined uh, environment controlled uh, environment, and to the totally environment controlled uh, cooling pads and tunnel ventilation systems. So uh, that's kind of where we are. And uh, basically, there are two predominant housing systems in today's production. Uh, the first one being the high-rise cage uh, operation. And so the reason it's called high-rise is because the birds then on the top of the building and the manure is in the lower tier, lower level. So you have the fresh air coming in into the attic and through the seating uh, inlets, go through the birds area and go through the floor slot opening over the manure area, then they get exhausted. So this is why it's called a high-rise barn. In this case, then, the manure basically stay in the barn for about a year, so uh, then you take the manure out after fall harvest, uh, Thanksgiving time also. So and that's one uh, type of housing system. Typically, uh, these houses uh, contain anywhere between 100,000 birds to up to 250 or even 300,000 birds. And in each cage, uh, once again, so varies between six to eight birds, typically. Okay. So uh, the other predominant uh, type of housing is uh, the so-called manure belt uh, cage system. So it can see uh, each of these uh, tiers uh, below uh, each of the ten cage row. Uh, then there's a manure belt, and uh, the manure belt then will take the manure out every three to four days, okay, and either put in a separate storage on farm or in a composting facility. Um, so obviously the air quality is uh, quite a bit uh, uh, better improved in this system uh, compared to the, the high-rise housing system. This costs more, about 50% uh, higher in cost, but in the long run, uh, indoor air quality is better and uh, helps improve the uh, bird environment and also the workers' environment. So to help the manure drying on the belt, uh, one of the ways is to, through the forced air, uh, drying, so these are blowers, actually, so then they have an air duct and uh, going through uh, different uh, rows. So each of the rows, actually, you can see there's an air plenum right below the cage above the manure belt. Okay, so here you see the manure belt, and then there's an air duct that's got a holes, then uh, blow, usually about a half to 0.7 CFM per bird of air, then blowing over the manure and help drying the manure. Okay. So here's the blowers you see. So the first it helps drying the manure. The, the faster you dry the manure, the less ammonia volatilization from the manure. But the downside is that you have to pay electricity. A uh, house of 200,000 birds, on average, you pay about uh, 120, 130 dollars of electricity bill per day. So uh, obviously that's a kind of an energy concern. It does add up. So as of uh, 2011, essentially looking at a new construction uh, in U.S. Uh, the high-rise, the barns essentially kind of decline, and, and uh, all the new uh, construction 
and it's all manure belt housing systems. So now it's 100% manure belt. Okay. So because of the animal welfare concerns, there are a lot of interest on alternative housing systems, and one of them being the, uh, the so-called enriched uh, uh, colony system. And uh, so uh, it's enriched because uh, the feature is the following. First of all, these houses are larger colony size. So contain these out of six to eight birds. You get a 60 birds in the colony. So the area of the birds, the space allocation is more. So 116 is typical. So also then there's some amenities uh, purchase. You can see these and also you can see these down here. Uh, nest boxes in here. So the birds wanted to have a privacy uh, place to lay eggs. And also kind of uh, allow them to exercise natural behavior. Then you have the scratch pad area so they can do some uh, dust facing behavior. Okay, so this is kind of a shot of a, a enriched colony system. You can see the birds that are kind of on the on top of the perch. All right. So the other thing is uh, the cage free. So uh, the enriched colony is still some countries still consider as so that's a steel cage system, uh, and uh, those eggs are actually la are still labeled as cage eggs in certain European countries. And uh, so the other one is the cage free aviary housing system. In this particular system, then, the birds can then uh, uh, have the free access to litter. You can see there's also colony in here, but uh, uh, especially during the daytime, bird will come off the colony and go into the floor, do the dust bathing, exercise, and moving around. So it's cage-free. And some of the system has got a, a door automatically closed or open, trying to do the nest training. So make sure the eggs are laid in the nest uh, instead of a having a lot of floor eggs, which generate then the food safety concerns. Okay. So this is a idea here is that multiple tiers as to better utilize the vertical space. So that's kind of, this is a cross-sectional view. You can see uh, these uh, colony rows, and then you have the floor open areas, and then you have the inspection aisles, okay, for the workers. There's another view of the uh, Avery hen housing system. Once again, you can see the inspection aisle in here, uh, middle here, then the ventilation of box inlets coming for fresh air coming in, the egg belts in here, first on the floor. So another shot of the uh, uh, different uh, uh, breeds of birds on the floor. And of course, uh, there are other type of housing, which is even though it's all probably between five, six percent of uh, uh, cage free uh, and a single level cage free and that box in the middle here and this is of course the area housing system and also the free range where the birds have access to outdoor uh, when weather permit. So in closure, so uh, concerns over animal welfare have led to a development and some adoption of alternative housing uh, systems and each of these of course has got a pros and cons uh, so when you have uh, more space for the birds uh, then uh, start having some environmental issues. So, so we have to look at, uh, when we look at these uh, housing systems, we have to take uh, the holistic approach, and not just the animal welfare, but uh, food safety, environmental impact, and food affordability. With that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you for your attention.